Now that we know what analysis of variance is, and we know how to get all of the tables in SPSS, what do all of these tables actually mean? So let's go through a bunch of output. The first one is from the explore test that we did, the explore tool. We are looking at how a statistic score, so one test score, varies by my students who have a GPA that's in the A range, the high B range, the low B range, and a C and below range. So this is their total GPA, what kind of a student do they tend to be, and how they score on their stats exam. We have sample size for each group. Percent valid, that's just telling you, that's giving you a hint on your missing data. No missing data, which is great. So we have a total of 100%. Scrolling down, we are now looking at the test score broken down by each group, which is looking, which is helping us with our normality assumption because we need each variable, each variable to be normally distributed by group. So for our A students, we have our mean, we have their standard deviation, we can get these in other tables as well, and for normality, we're really looking right here, the skewness value. So our skewness value needs to be between plus or minus one for us to be able to consider this group normally distributed. You can see that the A group is pushing it a little bit, but we are still between plus and minus one, so we can consider it a normal distribution. That's a normal variable. With the high B group, again, we have our mean, we have standard deviation, which I didn't get all of that. We're going to scroll down to skewness. This one is also within plus and minus one, so we have normality. Same with the low B group, same with the C and below group. So each one of our variables has met the normality assumption. We can get a visual of each one looking at the histograms. So just glancing through these, these all look pretty normal, except for the A group which were not surprising because that was the one that was kind of pushing our boundaries of being able to call it normal or not. And we have some that didn't do as well on the test as expected as all of their others. But it's still, it, we are still able to call it normal enough to meet our assumption because it falls within that plus and minus one range. This is a really helpful graph, especially if you're trying to figure out and handle outliers. With this, it's looking at each group and how varied the groups are. And if there is a separate little dot like that 362, that 362 is an outlier. It's so far away from the everyone else that they just keep it as a separate dot. So if I had a problem when I was trying to understand and deal with outliers first, that's how I would find them. So now I'm going to scroll down to my one-way ANOVA results. This is the descriptives for the one-way ANOVA. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these because they're not really that helpful for us. We're not going to really consider them. That's extras that we're not getting to right now. Here I have for each group, again, I have the sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation. So I can get that information up here where I highlight them in red, or I can get it in a different table right here. And this is the kind of table that you're going to want to be including in your results. The next table down is my test of HOV, homogeneity of variance. This is the Levine statistic. And I have a significant value of 0.98, 0 0.90 really. So this is not significant, meaning that there is no difference between variation, variance of groups, AKA <laughs> the groups all vary in a similar way. AKA we meet 
HOV assumption, which is good. If we have a significant result, then that would mean we violated the homogeneity of variance assumption. We would have to do something later. Here we are meeting the homogeneity of variance assumption because it is not significant. It's kind of a mouthful and a backwards way to think of it. So take notes. Next we have our actual ANOVA table. A couple things here. There is your F value. That's really important. We have our significance value. That's our P value. We are always, always, always going to change that to be P, and we are going to change that to be less than 0 0.001. So P is never actually zero. We're going to change that to be less than 0 0.001. This table also gives us our degrees freedom. And degrees freedom, we're, at, we're going to write a little differently. So it's going to be F degrees freedom of 3 comma 349 equals our F value of 221.09. Our P value is less than 0 0.001. So that's kind of the formal way to write up this entire table. Scrolling down, we have a means plot. This tells us where each of the four groups and how they compare to each other. So looking through this, I'm not too surprised that I have a significant difference. I don't know which groups differ from which groups, but my guess is that at least these two are different from these two. It could be that all four groups are significantly different. It could be that um, A and high B groups are essentially the same. Scrolling down, this is our univariate analysis of variance. This is that other weird GLM thing that we had to do in SPSS. And what this is doing is it's giving us our effect size. And specifically, we are going to look right here. This gives us the same information. So you can see the same F value, the same significance value. But we already have that up there. So we're just literally looking here. So the partial eta squared, eta is 0.15. So if I go back up to the formal way to write this, I would add eta equals 0.15, and then I would talk about if that is a small, medium, or large effect size. So at this point, we know effect size. We know that there's a significant difference between those four groups. We don't know where the difference actually is. So that is the next thing that we're going to add on, which is called post hoc tests.